Hello everyone, today I want to introduce laryngology and laryngal microsurgery. My name is Ming Yuxie, I come from Chonghua Christian Hospital in Taiwan. The larynx is located in the midline of the anterior neck, suspended from the hyoid bone above and attached to the trachea below the connective tissue. Removal of the connective tissue within the larynx would reveal a framework of six end cartilage. Some are paired and some are unpaired. Five of these cartilage are interior with at least one other laryngeal cartilage, while the remaining one is suspended in connective tissue. Although technically not part of the laryngeal framework, influence of the hyoid on laryngeal position must be emphasized. It is generally a safe left vertical hyoid position which is demanded by the degree of activation in muscle which attach to it. The singular cricoid cartilage forms the inferior ring of the larynx. It is attached to the trachea inferiorly by the cricotracheal ligament. The cricoid is shaped like a ring with a thin anterior ring of hyaline cartilage, which arch a posterior lateral to form a broad posterior lamina. A rest smooth surface is located on each lateral arch, forming an articular facet where the cricoid communicated with the inferior hole of the thyroid forming the cricocyroid joint. Additional articular facets are located on the superior surface of the posterior lamina where the cricoid communicated with the arytenoid cartilage forming the cricoarytenoid joint. The vocal fold surface is hydrated by transepithelial water flux moving to the surface from within the mucus secretion from glands within the vocal fold and the laryngeal ventricles. Immediately below the epithelium is a basement membrane zone containing numerous collagen fiber, which connected to epithelium to the layer immediately below the superficial layer of the lamina propria also known as rancus space. It composed many emphasis interstitial protein along with small concentration of elastin and collagen, vocal ligament, which connects to arytenoid cartilage to the thyroid and supported the vibration stress during formation. The paired posterior cricoarytenoid muscle originated on the broad posterior lamina of the cricoid and inserted onto the muscular process of the arytenoid. Due to its angle of insertion, this muscle abducts the vocal fold and widens the glottis when contacting. It is the only activated abductor muscle of the vocal fold. While the vocal folds are often at rest during speed production, they need to be rapidly abducted. Non appearing glottic closure. Management of the vocal cord atrophy or erinx edema, it is begin the voice therapy. Vocal atrophy. The vocal fold atrophy refers to the gradual change in the vocal fold as people age. The vocal fold muscle can become thinner or less taut over time. The soft outer layer of the vocal fold can also lose spark over time. This tissue change affects the ability of the vocal fold to vibrate regularly and can cause an abnormal gap between the vocal fold. Vocal fold nodule Vocal fold nodules are bilateral outward, rest above the surface of the epithelium, masses located at the mid-membrane's medial edge of the vocal fold. Along with vocal fold polyps, cysts, and pseudocysts, they have been labeled a type of benign mid-membrane lesion. When a functional voicing behavior leads to a phonotrauma and a tissue change, the middle membrane region is the most common area affected. Vocal fold polyp Vocal fold polyps are caused by phonotrauma and their development may be exacerbated by stimuli such as reflux, smoking, allergy, and infection. One theory suggests that polyps developed secondary to phonotrauma-induced rupture of small blood vessel within the vocal folds. On endoscope, it is not uncommon to visualize enlarged blood vessel leading into vocal fold polyps. 
suggestion prior to injury to the vasculature at a microscopic level, vocal pop problems are characterized by epithelial hyperplasia and sometimes atrophy. Increased fibronectin crossed around abnormal vascularity along with decreased collagen deposition in the region of the basement membrane zone and other vascular abnormality in the vocal fold cover. It has been suggested that vocal fold experience the formation of vocal fold polyp are characterized by reduced collagen type 4 deposition in the basement membrane zone compared to other benign middle membrane lesion. A condition which might put a speaker at risk for polyp development over some other benign masses. Although histologically they are somewhat similar, vocal fold polyp appears to result in graft change below the, uh, the epithelium. Voice change caused by bilateral diffuse polyposis, chronic Rankine edema, or small cross polyp typically becomes noticeable enough to prompt a laryngeal examination in middle aged talkative women who have been long term smoker, we can see in the picture. In inspiratory formation, we can see the diffuse polyposis. Vocal fold pseudocysts are isolated polyp-like edematous masses located most commonly at the middle membranes region of the vocal fold. This subtype is a more recent level and has been classically described as an edematous polyp. As which the subsequent discussion of the vocal fold cyst, we qualify this diagnosis as terrorist because it, in this case, Current theory suggests that pseudocysts develop secondary to phonal trauma in context of an underlying grotal incompetence due to scar or vocal fold paralysis. Contact granuloma or ulceration is seen primarily in men. Chronic coughing or throat clearing and the reflux of acid from the stomach into the posterior larynx during sleep. Sometime after intubation procedure, Pregnant necrosis of the endotracheal tube along with reparative granulomas. An anti flux regimen should be started on an empiric basis, even for patients with no symptom or reflux. The necessity of a routine bearing or a pH monitor study remains controversial. Maturation and the resolution of the granuloma can often occur spontaneously over three to six months. Thus, the role of the voice therapy to abolish throat clearing raises a very pitch of force speak. And the soul force is indeterminate. Indirect injection of the deported corticosteroid directly into the lesion and the area around this basis can be helped. Surgery should be at this result, not only because of the expectation of maturation and the spontaneous detachment, but also because Postoperative recurrence of the ulcer or granuloma is predictable. Vocal fold neoplasm. Vocal fold papilloma are a small wart like growth caused by human papilloma virus, HPV virus. The condition is also known as recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. This develop primarily on the vocal fold but can also appear at other sites of the larynx. Papilloma causes dysphonia when they interface with grotal closure and epithelial oscillation during vibration. Laryngeal papillomatosis is associated with a number of different HPV subtypes, but most frequently HPV6 and HPV11, which are believed to be passed to a child from the mother at birth or at any other time by human to human contact. No laryngeal papilloma is seen more commonly in children, but there are a growing number of adults being affected by the HPV virus and at risk of papilloma development. Surgical treatments in the front line management of papilloma. Although there are considerations which must be taken into account with these disorders that are unique, papilloma tends to recur and it's common for those affected to undergo repeat surgeries. Repeat incision to the vocal mucosa run the risk of a permanent scar. So the surgical strategy depends on the surgeon and has included microlaryngoscopic removal with cold steel instrument, laser or micro divider. Vocal leukoplakia. 
uh, in the 2017, the WHO classified lesions that were previously termed pre-malignancy, carcinoma in situ, and the varying degree of dysplasia to a new category of pre-cancer lesions. Pre-cancer lesions were co characterized into a two-tire system, including low-grade dysplasia and high-grade dysplasia. Clinically, dysplasia lesions are noted on the vocal fold as leukoplakia white patch, or erythroplakia, red patch, or erythroleukoplakia, and it means mixed red, red and white patch. Low-grade dysplasia has a relatively low malignant potential, while high-grade dysplasia is considered a high-risk pre-malignant lesion. The treatment of the pre-cancer lesion should aim to eradicate the lesion while preserving voice quality and the laryngeal function. So patients with, with concerning vocal fold lesion should undergo micro-directed laryngoscope with direct biopsy. Grotier cancer. Cancer of the larynx account for 2 to 4.5% of all malignant neoplasms, and 25% of the head and neck tumor, with 50% of this cancer involving the vocal fold. Treatment goals are a cure of the cancer and the preservation of laryngeal functions, such as voice and the swallowing, and the minimizing the risk of serious complications. Different types of the procedure can be used, such as transoral laser microsurgery, radiotherapy, or open partial laryngectomy. And the surgical module are also a major concern. Some authors have considered positive margin as a factor of the bad prognosis. However, other did not demonstrate the association of the margin status and the patient's outcome. A resection margin of 2 mm is often considered sufficient in cancer of glottis, as opposed to other sites in the head neck. Early cancer of the glottis refers to a cancer that has not spread to adjacent space of the larynx and correspond to the stage TIS, T1, and T2. And the first symptom of the cancer of glottis, usually hoarseness, and early diagnosis is quite relevant, since advanced lesions require more aggressive treatment modality. And we can see the cancer region from the least powering. Early glottis glamour cell carcinoma and the anterior commissure. When the tumor is crossed in the anterior commissure, it is a very difficult problem to resolve. Anterior commissure involving has been associated with decreased local control rate with surgery and the radiotherapy. The anterior commissure is a difficult region to assess, and the deep invention may not be recognized, resulting in understanding and under-treatment. One of the hypotheses of the decreased effectiveness of radiotherapy has been under dosage with supervoltage radiotherapy at the tumor air interface. The high rate of value at the anterior commissure, which may be difficult to visualize at the time of surgical resection. With improved understanding of the anatomy, improved instrument and technique, excellent control rate has been achieved now. And the following, I will introduce some operation procedure. Instrument. The most used laryngoscope tube at our situation is the lindor with the length of 80 to 200 mm and the depth to diameter of 8 to 16 mm. The medium size cross coverage type of adult is used the predominant in the endolarens. An overlong small bore universe applicable laryngoscope is used in children and adults with difficult adjustable area in the endolarens. Especially the anterior commissure, the interior and the subglottic region. The proximal end of the tube is different sharp in dependence to the size for adults and children. The side of the tube turned to the teeth is flat for sparing the pressure of the teeth as uniform as possible. A both side of the proximal and mounting part are pressable to face the cold light ray, either at the left or right side. And large reinforceps with teeth are needed for grasping the epiglottis. But smaller tooths and a smooth grasping forceps are needed for management mucosa margins. All instruments should be manipulated free-handed, which is easily trainable, and the backing of the arm becomes dispensable. 
The set of microsurgery instruments should be kept in a vast amount. It included double spoon forceps, scissors, strap, laterally and upward uh, arcuated, sickle and peeling knives, suction tube and coagulation probes. Instrument for laser microlaryngology surgery or the non-refracting surface. Protect unnecessary for the subglottic area when tube less ventilation is applicable. Additional when the vocal cord are treated, the first cord are also the contralateral intact side is to be moved sideward. The patient position in intra -oper operative setup. The reactive laryngopharyngoscope is performed under apnea and prior to endotrach intubation. The laryngoscope holder is either pressed on patient's chest with the broader rubbing ring and it is put on a robust instrument table, respectively a holding bowl just over his chest to avoid pressure on the elastic chest and to minimize movement of the instrument. The orphaned pruris patient needs to be operative, a careful investigation and the treatment to make them capable for anesthesia. Dental record is essential before insertion the laryngoscope. When indicated, the patient has to go for reaction preoperatively. Dental impression tries equally spread the pressure of the laryngoscope at the teeth of the upper jaw and can bridge a dental gap. Patient lie in dorsal position on the operating table and the correct posture of the head is the dojo fraction in flat bedding. Using adequate laryngoscope type is enabled even in patients with a sick and a short neck to adjust the larynx. If there are anomastic indications concerning pathology at the cervical spine or orthopedic specialist, has to decide if the head position during laryngoscope will be tolerated well. First of all, the teeth protector of the lower and upper jaw is pressed in position. The insertion of the laryngoscope should be performed not until the patient is fully relaxed and in sufficient depth of the narcosis. The laryngoscope should be as large as possible in able best lightening and the overview of the larynx. In cases of a pre-existing laryngotrachea intubation, the ventilation tube is moved by two fingers to the left side and the laryngoscope is inserted from the right side under the illumination of the cold light which is piped inside of the tube to the distal end. The tongue should not be pinched between the teeth and the laryngoscope at the same time. The epiglottis is loaded up by the laryngoscope. If the laryngeal skeleton is to be pressed from outside to inward, in case of the need to expose the anterior commission, the laryngoscope should be inserted only on into the area of the fourth core. Projectomy involves removal of the entire membrane's vocal cord with the vocalis muscle. The inner perichondria of the thyroid cartilage can be included and the arytenoid cartilage can also be removed, either partially or completely. The European Laryngology Society is proposing a classification of different laryngeal endoscopic cordectomy in order to ensure better definition of postoperative results. We chose to keep the word cordectomy even for partial resection because it is the term most often used in the surgical literature. The classification comprises eight types of cordectomy. A subepithelium cordectomy is type 1, which is the resection of the epithelium. A subligamental cordectomy is type 2, which is a resection of epithelium, rankin space, and vocal ligament. Transmuscular cordectomy is type 3 which process through a vocalis muscle, total cordectomy is type 4, extended cordectomy, which encompasses with the contralateral vocal fold and the anterior commission, is type 5a, extended cordectomy, which includes the arytenoid, is 5b, extended cordectomy, which encompasses the subglottic, is type 5c, and extended cordectomy, which includes the ventricle, is 5b.
should advise the patient to be silent and uh, do not coughing. Coughing depressing and the secretic agent are helpful in this phase. A normal thing of speech is considerable as a possible after hearing of the alternation and the laryngology investigation. For nitric exercise are a useful help for voice rehabilitation, especially in case functional concession and the after removal of rectal edema, or a chronic laryngitis, or a resection of a vocal cord, or any arytenoidectomy. Antibiotics are prescribed only when enlarged surgical operation like partial endoscopic tumor resection or arytenoidectomy were performed. Humid inhalation to be recommended in any cases. The advantage of endoscopic laryngeal microsurgery is patient can be extubated without any special severance or need for a tracheostomy. It is very short hospital stay only one or two days. Some cats can go home after the surgery. The recovery time is very short and the patient can return to normal life and work shortly. In some cases, we can consider post-operative broad-spectrum antibiotics if there is significant exposed cartilage at the end of the procedure. Treat the patient for laryngeal pharyngeal reflux for up to two months is considered. This helps optimize mucosa hearing while preventing granuloma formation. Thanks for your listening.